investors. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Good morning, everyone. Uh, this is Thursday, the 8th of June. Uh, well, well, <laughs> this is a fascinating market. The Dow suddenly became a leader after the S&P and the QQQs were soaring to the upside, and they kind of took a bit of a breather. And now what we're looking at is that the Dow is up 32. It was uh, up uh, almost 100 yesterday and uh, kind of leading the pack. And I think that this bifurcation is going to continue a little longer. And one of the reasons that we, I'm looking at this, we are still along the Dow, but the, one of the reasons we're looking at this um, in this kind of split personality uh, manner is that, I'll go through this uh, slowly now. Look, the Dow has this rectangle formation. It could be making a V-shaped pattern. We just saw that V-shaped pattern right here in the uh, uh, E-mini. Here's your... Uh, uh, this is the uh, one-minute chart. It made this kind of cup or V-shaped pattern. Had a big spike above the previous high that was made at about 9:15, 9:30 this morning, at uh, 42.77. Now we're going to see: Does it have the strength to keep going to the upside? Um, and you can see this 200-period moving average. How the resistance has been so strong. Look at that resistance in the 200 period moving average. And it managed to spike just a moment ago, just for a brief period. And now it's struggling again. Now, we've got to follow this closely because in this 10-minute chart, if the E-mini is able to close, uh, I would say above the high that was just made of 42.79. Remember yesterday, 42.80 was the level that we were looking at. Well, 42 80 again is going to be this, this magic number. It keeps pulling back, pulling back. Ugh. Uh, that's a pity, but it, it actually did very, very nicely um, in that big spike to the upside. That was a peak C in the one-minute chart. It should try to get to the D. All right, well, it's, that's enough with that. I just wanted to show you patterns repeat over and over. It doesn't matter whether it's a one-minute chart or a daily or a monthly. Same thing, same parameters are applicable. Uh, 33698 on the Dow, up 33, the S&P. Now, this is what this is fascinating to me always. It's such a big challenge. One of the things that keeps me just so absolutely fascinated with the, with the market for for every minute of the day, every hour of the of the day, every day of the week, every week of the month, uh, for years and years. Because look, in the Chapman Wave methodology. We're always looking to identify the lowest low point. You know that we try to do that for subscribers uh, very, very uh, often over the over the years. Try to pick the the low as we've done March of the sixth of uh, just to get a few March the sixth of two thousand and nine. Got the down the exact low of the day. Uh, we've done that. We got that on the October low. We got that uh, just recently. So we, I I want to be able to to have that flexibility. So now what's happened is if you go to the low um, that was made on May the 5th or so, let me just go to this, May the, yeah, May the 4th, and the S&P at 48.28, peak A, peak B, and in the Chapman Week, we're always looking for identifying the lowest low bar. Funny how many birds have been bumping into windows lately. Um, and, and count each successively higher peak. You can go all the way to... Peak A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Seventh highest peak. There's never an H in the Chapman Wave methodology. And at the same time, what we're looking at is the uh, fourth highest peak, peak D, is where other things can happen. All right, let's get out of this and go back. So we got to our peak D. But at peak D is where other things can happen. One of the things is within three bars, if there's a higher high after that peak D, that's new leg E. But it could also have an alternate count. It's the only way that you can get an alternate count is at that peak D with an instant restart. Well, that instant restart says, is this an F in the uh, S&P with a high on the 7th? That's yesterday of 42.99.19. Well, it's holding so well. If if that sell-off yesterday intraday was something really serious, today the, the futures early in the morning would have been down 32 
the S&P futures, the Dow would have been down about 180 to 230. The QQQ would have been very sharply lower. Um, no, I think that was just a very important digestive moment. I think it's like an internal high. I think the residual high is going to come in a couple of days, and I'll show you, I'll show you why. If this is going to be a peak F, we should not break above 42.99 in the next two sessions. If in the next two sessions, though, we take out the low of the gap, the gap low of that big spike on the 2nd of June of 42.41, let's call it 42.41, that's going to be a big negative. That'll say, you know what? We, may, we might be rotating, but the, the leaders, just the recent leaders, are now going to be the recent failures. Because why the QQQ is exactly the same thing. QQQ, NDX 100 trading vehicle, Invesco QQQ Trust Series, made a peak F with a double top, 357.50. Uh, that was on the uh, 5th of uh, June. Yesterday's high was 30, 350, wait, what am I doing? Yeah, 357.12, just under it. So there's a chance that this is an, a peak F without this instant restart instead of an F slash B. That's the big question. But look at the distance of the nine period moving average over the 14. Look at the way the MACD is holding okay and it's just started to turn down, still positive. And the stochastic still at 86% and the on balance volume all in the daily. Look at the strength of the weekly chart. Yes, the on balance volume in both cases uh, is, is over overbought. But the price is holding really well, and even today, it's up a dollar sixty. So you can see why I'm saying <clears throat> very important moment uh, for a number of reasons. But the most, the most, the key reason right now is that the technicals are still strong. So we could see flurries to the upside as the Dow. I'll go back to the Dow just for a moment. Squeaks to a leg C. It doesn't have to because it's under the previous high of thirty-four thousand uh, nine two fifty-seven on the 1st of May. So failures can happen under that. Uh, it means you don't have to get to a D. You can fail to B, C, anything. But at this particular point, it looks like there's just enough strength with a stochastic at 85% and the MACD good, nine period nicely over the 14, to suddenly have a little pop that goes to maybe 33, 8, teens, somewhere around there, for a C, and then it pulls back, and then it makes the D. It's possible to do that. And you can see the weekly has so much resistance up in the 30, just under 34,000, that that could happen. Now, here's the other thing, and this is, I think, fascinating. The IWM, and I always talk about the scales of justice, where you're on the one side, you've got all the evidence, and the other side, you've got all the evidence, and you have to juggle them. That's like the market. So yesterday, we saw that when the leaders, that was the S&P, the semiconductors, and the QQQs were all weak. The Dow took the leadership role with the IWM. And that, to me, is important. As long as you've got that rotation, you don't have to have this uh, synchronous smash to the downside. Now, here's the trouble. IWM is, with an instant restart, leg E, maybe a peak E if there isn't a high above yesterday's high, or 187.77. Isn't that fascinating? If it goes above that, then that becomes an F, but it becomes an F slash B. That means as long as the tank. Important, we've got almost all the indices at the point where they could turn down, but they're not. In fact, they're trying to go on the strength. You look at the the uh, Dow up 44. I'll be back in a moment. Basil Trap and Titan Missions Hour. We'll talk about questions that I have. We have exciting news, Tigers. This June, Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle will be hosting two webinars, providing insight into his renowned market timing methodologies. On June 8th, Tim will delve into the S&P 500, teaching sentiment indicators, identifying market bottoms and divergence, and so much more. On June 15th, Tim pivots to the gold market, taking a look at cycle analysis, ratio studies, advanced decline indicators, and other important tools for analyzing this sector. Sign up today on TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. 
You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at tfnn.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hello, folks. So gold is just had a big spike to the outside, $24.19. This is, this is exactly what I'm about. That the buy is going to go. But perhaps if we start to see... Uh, going into, I can't say next week, I, I needed to go all the way into the, the third week of June, into June, the uh, uh, the week of the 21st, uh, week of the 18th. Yeah, in the week of the 18th, uh, it's not good enough just to go next week. If the XLF, I'm putting these two together, the XLF was trading down 17 cents at 33. There's the S&P Select Financial Spider Fund. And you can see the weekly chart made an H pattern. Now it's trying to make the cup formation. It's really struggling, but it's, it's doing okay. But if what we need to see, and this is going to be really important, is we need to see that um, the XLF is trying to get closer to the 33, 73, 200 period moving average over the next. I'm going to give it one. Uh, going into that that second week, that's that includes this week, going into tomorrow, Friday, the end of the week, and then the full five days of next week. That's going to be really important. Why? Because if it's able to do that, we'll see whether or not there's an amelioration of the nervousness of of all the you know governments and huge. Uh, um, financial institutions that are buying gold because they are afraid of what's going they think might happen to the financial uh, the financial sector that's the banking sector so that's my thinking right now it's one of them it's not all that goes with gold there's so many other factors and of course when you go to silver silver is being um, there's a lot that's now going to silver from the usage of electric vehicles uh, that's uh, silver's now become a, a, a quite a, quite an important. But remember, what we talk, I always talk about the semiconductors as being the the crude oil of the 21st century, because everything in the in the 1900s revolved around and evolved around uh, oil, plastics, everything. Well, 
1980, kind of that's what I consider the transition phase, all of a sudden semiconductor chips became really important and uh, even more and more and more important. But if you remember, cameras used to, a uh, film used to use silver. And then, of course, with digital and everything, that, that kind of faded. So that usage uh, kind of dissipated. But I think silver's coming back. So it's, it's it, now I have to think of them a little bit separately, gold and silver, although they travel kind of together. Now, here's another thing. Um, yes, uh, I, I, Dan, I, I'm the one that's going to make the change there about talking into the into the, the music of the break. That's my fault. Um, so here's the other thing that I'm looking at. Uh, platinum, we were talking about platinum is pulling back. I just want you to go back to the XLF because I went to the silver because of the XLF, the relationship of the, all these different things. Well, in the case of the KRE, which is the uh, KRE is the S&P regional banking ETF, it did everything we were looking for that I was I showed subscribers were actually long this uh, ETF. It went right to a peak D, and, and to, instead of doing all sorts of things today, taking a little bit off and all that, I wanted to give it some kind of credence in this rally because the MACD is good, the nine's way over the 14, price is way over the nine. It went to my 44.59 target on the left side, 45.35 was the outside target, and the high yesterday was 44.98, it just missed it. Um, all of those things, the MACD is good, stochastic's flat at 87%, on balance volumes, good, but lagging a little bit. And the relative strength index has been very strong. I like that. So within that context, what I'm looking at is the weekly chart touched the 14-period moving average. That's, that's a good start. But it is at peak D. What do we say at peak D in the Chapman Wave methodology? Peak D is where other things can happen. You can get your instant restart or like the Dow so often, I-N-D-U, like the Dow, you can get your peak D and get quite a big pullback. Uh, yes, it could go to E, but D's where you've got to be a little bit careful. So I'm watching this because it's together with the alternate count in the S&P and the QQQ, IWM even, the IWM. Look, gone to a leg, here it is, leg E, maybe a peak E today. All the technicals are strong, except the unbalanced volume is, is somewhat overbought. That's why we're getting some kind of a pullback, I believe. Okay, so I want you to go through those things. I want you to also show you crude oil right now. As I've said for some time, it's just stuck in a range. Down, now it's down 38 cents to 72.19. A lot of people are talking about it breaking out and going into the 80s. Uh, I, I said, I don't think so. Not based on my chart patterns. My chart patterns say that lowercase h to go to lowercase m starts to fail. Got to be careful, but it could be a rally, but it's got to close decisively over the upper peaks of the arches. And so far, it hasn't happened on the continuous contract. And that price would be 74.73 on the continuous contract. Um, okay, did that, did that, did that. I just want to quickly do the TLT. TLT is made, there's the same pattern. You remember patterns repeat over and over? Lowercase h goes to a lowercase m. In fact, they like three M's right there. Three M. Oh, oh, oh. that took it. Remember, we had Sue on the on. The, um, uh, she had called about triple M way back. That was way back. Um, way back. Now I can't remember. I should have typed it in. And I said, no, I'd be really careful. Um, it, oh, it was over there, somewhere in early May. And she, it was trading at about 104, and she was in it. And she said, "I said, I would, I would put a stop in, uh, just a little bit lower down, because if this goes lower, it could go all the way down below the 100.16 level." Well, lo and behold, it hit 92 the other day, 92.38, and then popped up. Oh, I got to three. That's the way my mind works. I'm sorry. We got to triple M because I was looking at. I got to go back to see what it was. Oh, the TLT. Um, this is the lowercase h that goes to a lowercase m that it did it t uh, twice already. <laughs> so that's how I got to triple m, 3m uh, ink. So, all right, what we're, what we're looking at here is patterns repeat. I've gone through a bunch of the things I wanted to look at, and now I wanted to, I had a question about the longer term QQQ, and all I can say is I don't think the QQQ upside action is done. But whether or not it goes much higher than the 3358, 
3.61 area in this particular move to get to the left side high of 3.71.83 that was made uh, way back um, in, in April or so of last year. Um, I don't know yet, but I, I oh, yeah, you wanted to have a quick look at the e-mini? Yeah, e-mini has made this little double top. That exact price is uh, 42.80.25. 4280.50. So that's an E. Remember, D is your target in the travel wave. At D, other things can happen. That's where you have to start using some of the other techniques. And what I do is the measured move. And the measured move right here is the vertical move, that is. Right there. See how strong everything is? The stochastic was under 80%, but it was actually rallying. And right here, whoops, right here. There's still strength. The MACD is good. Stochastic is actually improving much, much higher than it was. That's a good sign. So here's where I start the alternate count. E, and that's an F. I, I want to do these live because this is what I do. This is what I'm doing all, all day. I'm using this to practice my techniques. And that's really important. So we'll see. Yeah, and this is a single leg A, a huge A. Oops, I'll, I'll stop talking. We've got a break coming up. Guys, up will be right. Back. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hello, Mr. Chapman. This is the Tiger Technician Tower. 
Uh, coming in. All right. So uh, what I want to say, I was hoping to have my, for myself, because I'm going to be working on this next week. Uh, I'm going to be out uh, of my office, but I will be doing as many shows as I can, plus my daily newsletter. But I'm going to be working on this two-click session. The reason why I just got out of a two-click going, going from the long right here at this low, the two-click session means that you can, if you can get the low in the early morning and hold it all the way through to past maybe 2 o'clock Eastern time, if it holds that long, based on the nine period moving average over over the 14 to 10 minute chart, you can hold that all the way through. But the reason why I just there, there are a couple of things going on that I just needed to be free to think clearly here. It's okay if it keeps going, doesn't matter. Um, but I just needed that for myself. So a question came in here about the DR. Yeah, the, we'll work on that. I know I tend to talk through into the, into the music for the break. It's not uh, our wonderful engineer's fault. Uh, he's doing what he can. I'll have to figure out what to do there. I like to just, I'm doing with things I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the market. It doesn't matter to me about a break or anything. The market doesn't stop just because there's a break. Anyway, I'll do my best to kind of start a little later and end a little earlier uh, in the in the in the breaks. Five uh, five point eight one is DRRX. I can't see right now what it is. Die is something core. Cool. And uh, what uh, interesting drug to treat liver injury caused by alcohol, alcoholic, hepatitis. Oh, yeah. So look how it's holding this 200 period moving average. Look how important that, that level is. That, that to me is so, that, that's key. And that's key because um, within the context of these big U-shaped formations, which is very often what you see in biotech, especially the mini microbiotechs, they, they have an inch a month, a huge move up, and they close with a long wick. Look at the long wicks of this character. It's the character of this particular thing. It's the character of mini biotechs. Now, the interesting thing is it's held the 200 period moving average. I know that you're looking at this in a longer term perspective. What I would do is you see the way it comes down in the ellipse to the left side is called the quoro. That's the quarter of a, of a semicircle. Well, that quoro says, if it's able to make that like a, like a ship, the, the hull of a ship, the left side of the hull, now you want to get to the right. I need to see this very ugly candle, the candle of the left side, which is on the May the, uh, sorry, June the 2nd, with a high of 637 and a low of 555. I need to see a close above that. And in the scale that I'm looking at, it should take maybe five sessions, preferably less, but five sessions. Now, the key thing here is look how quickly the moves to the upside are on the weekly chart. It's like three weeks, four weeks, bam, it goes up and then gives everything back in the Eiffel Tower. Straight up, straight down. What's the Eiffel Tower? Here's the Eiffel Tower. In the, in the uh, peak A, goes to an A and then fails, comes back down sharply. It looks like an uppercase A or the Eiffel Tower. Straight up and straight down. And that's kind of what you've got right here. <clears throat> Eiffel Tower there, but it held. It held the 200 period moving average. So that's what I'm saying. You don't want to see it take out this low of three days ago, which is at 5.33. If it takes out 5.33, closes under 5.33, you're going to have to wait a long time. But I like the idea of being in, looking at it, being in for the big move. The big move will start if on a closing basis, on an hourly closing basis, if it can hold above maybe 6.11 for a whole hour, it's probably going to go quickly to the 618, 622 area. That's just the way I'd be looking at it. But you need speed. You don't need time. Time is going to be, time is your enemy. You need speed. Otherwise, you have to wait for the next big move to the upside. That's one question. Here's a question that is important for me. It's important, I think, for a lot of people. What do I have looking out uh, on the QQQ? So can I do an analysis of the QQQ? Well, I, I do, but I don't know if Larry is able to do his show. I, that hour, one to two, I might have free. If I'm able to do it, there are a lot of things I will look at during that hour um, because I want to look at some of the grains, some of the different commodities, etc. But in the, in the meantime, what I am going to do is to show you, I'm just looking at some questions. Okay, that was a question right there. Uh, could I look at, I missed it. Oh, no. Um, I'm just trying to find someone in the den and posted a question. I think it was S and P. Uh, looks like uh, XOP. Could I look at the XOP? So let me just do that because it's a question that's also come up, and they kind of go together because the XOP is the oil and gas exploration. The reason why I say they go together, I haven't done an analysis on this for a little bit, 
but the reason why I wanted to say they go together is that the oil and gas, if we start to see oil move higher and you can get the OIH, remember I always move around because everything I'm looking at is related, the OIH, which has a, a pretty similar pattern to the XOP, Oil Services uh, Vec uh, Van Eck Vectors ETF, uh, made a peak G, I believe, held this Chapman Wave inside track propellant zone. And last time went to the repellent zone. So, so far that's good. Is trying to make the H formation. Remember the chart we were looking at in DRX, how I, how I drew in this ellipse on the left side. That's the coro. That's a quarter of the semicircle. You want to see this move up. And you want to see this is the low right here. And this is a really great spike to the upside in XOP. So I'm just going to say to you, I that it, the oil exploration, that the whole services is different to the multinationals. And in this particular instance, I'm going to say there is some upside. The 200 period moving average of 276 is a 270. I'm going to call it 278. Is really important support. But at this particular point at 279.88, I'm going to suggest in the, in, the, in the case of the person who asked me, S&P, yes, I would start just a small position in the, at 279. Why would I start a small position? Because this takeoff has the, uh, has the credence. It has the 9 period over the 14. The 200 period got hit and broke above it yesterday, and now it's holding above it. MACD's good stochastics flat at 87%. So treat it as something separate to oil. It's on its own uh, momentum. And the reason why I want you to put it together with the, with the QQQ is that in chart patterns, look at the other QQQ, very, very different chart pattern. What you look for is what gives you veracity, what gives you confidence to say that the move that started is one that can continue. So for the monthly chart, there's not yet been a breakdown of the XOP. In the QQQ, there's been a fabulous break with the nine, with the nine period last month and this month confirming a, a positive crossover. The MACD is cross positive. The stochastic is still lagging in the monthly at 62%. But the on balance volume is rallying. In the weekly chart, the MACD is good. The stochastic is flat at 96%, 90, almost 97%. You can't ask for anything better. And it does look like it's tipping down a little bit. But so far, that's all it's saying. It might be tipping down from 97 to 96%. And the on balance volume says, yes, that is a little overbought. And it's in leg G slash C. And I've got a beautiful symmetry here. The last symmetry, it got there um, in the QQQ. It got to my my target of uh, 340, 331, I think it was over there. Oh, 324, I think it was. It, you know, I went late. It was early or late. And then it went sideways for six weeks. And then, bam, it broke to the upside. Now I think it's getting ready for a digestive phase. And all I can say is that I'll do a little bit more when I reach her. That's a trap for Tiger Conditions Hour. Dow's up 49 now. s and up 6. Be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. 
Tom's Daily Market Newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. So now I'd like just to add a couple of fundamental uh, aspects to it, and uh, this is not my forte because uh, I don't do a fundamental analysis much, but he, this is my, my background thing. And that is, and I, I've been saying this for some time, I have no real proof. It's just, it's kind of like, a, it's, I wouldn't say it's a guess, it's just kind of putting your experiences together, having lived to a certain age and to a certain age, and gone through this a number of times. And that is, I, I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if the jobless numbers, that is the people uh, out of work, increase suddenly and really sharply and it wouldn't surprise me i've been saying the next six to eight weeks and that was about three weeks ago so um we're into that period so in the summer i would not be surprised if there's just a sudden it's just like almost all the announcements we've had have come from a huge change in numbers and i think that that's the that's the thing that I, I suspect that the market must be ready in the Dow's case for a, an 1,800 to 2,200 point slide at any point, I, I would say, in the summer. I'm still very positive, maybe maybe not as much as that, but I'm saying a pretty sharp, and it would be, that's why today I see to subscribers, I don't think we're going down sharply because we didn't get this cascade in the, in the futures. <clears throat> After yesterday's turnaround, we should have got a cascade all the way uh, down to um, S&P minus 63, Dow down, maybe it was holding a bit better, only down 230. But we haven't got that. And that just said to me, we aren't yet ready for the uh, huge sell-offs come with two or three sessions of monster selling. And it, it comes one, it's not like selling and then nothing, then selling, then nothing. No, it's just three sessions, bam, 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 bam. And then that just sets the stage that now you've got your upside resistance level clearly demarcated and now you have to see how how do you deal with the lower highs and lower lows we haven't got that yet look even now remember i said that i just i've been i wanted to concentrate so i'm getting out of a position um i got out right there got in the low rate, rate just i thought it would be a nice two two click session but i just i you know there were other things that i had to do so i got out and now we're back to where it was 82, 82 is where I got out. So, so 42, 81, 75 right now. This could be a wonderful two-click session day. It's only a leg A to the upside, and even then it's been reluctant to make a peak A in the 10-minute chart. This is still leg A, and that's from the low of the day at uh, 42, somewhere around 42.62, and here we are at 42.82, and it's still a single leg A to the upside. I think this strength, and then... Uh, someone that I uh, didn't see who uh, who it was said, uh, "Boring, boring." 
I think this is really very fascinating. There have been some big moves within a limited range, but pretty look at this. Uh, this peak in the one minute chart and then plops down. It comes back up in this V-shaped pattern. It makes a U and a U and a U. That's the same U pattern we were looking at in this uh, DRRX or whatever it was that we were looking at a moment ago. And look at this. Left side, I said the technicals are still pretty good here. And even here, the technicals were pretty good. And now we've got a brand new signal because only, the only thing it can be right now is peak A, I believe, A and a B. I'm doing this live because this is the way I like to do my notations and my 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 uh, the homework I do for subscribers to my opening call. So in the meantime, back at the ranch. Uh, so the QQQ, in the long term, that I think the 371 high that was made back somewhere around April of last year. That's my target on the upside. We're at 351.62 right now. I think it's my target. I don't know if it's in this particular phase right now. Or we have to get down to 327, the 14 period exponential moving average of the weekly chart of the QQQs uh, in a sudden sharp sell off. And that would include, now let's just do this to, to go together with everything. NVIDIA is in the Qs as well as the uh, SMHs. Remember, I drew the H pattern, the lowercase. What is the lowercase H pattern in the Chapman Wave methodology? We're looking at three core, uh, the, the dynamicism of these three, three patterns is. In every single chart you look at, straight line up, straight line down, cup formation could be a V. You're going from one point down, then back to that point, from one point up, and then back to that point in the arch formation or the inverted V. And the dreaded H says you come down, you make the arch formation, you fade into peak A or B. If you take out that left side, low, you can keep going down. You can go one to one to the downside of the arch. And in the cup formation, it's the exact same thing, but on the upside, it's green. So what have we got right here? We've got the dreaded H fading. So far, it's failed because it took out that low at an A. That's an A. I'm not going to call it an A minus yet because yeah, I do have to call it an A minus just for the moment. And we'll see what happens here. You're on the nine period moving average. And I said that I believe in the next uh, week or two, you will take out this left side low of uh, 366.35 in NVIDIA. So NVIDIA is saying, I, I should check my, my email right now. This is when I've usually missed an email. Yesterday was the key, a couple of emails I missed. I've gone through them already today. Um, no, I haven't missed anything. Okay, good. Um, so what we're looking at is NVIDIA uh, it goes with the SMHs and the Qs. Look at the SMHs. Got a peak A, gray A, and now it's gone to a lower one. Here's another A, there's another A, there's a new one. There's the first arch, here's the second arch. And I think that this gap right here is going to be key. 141.78, the low of the 26th of May. Take that out um, with lower lows and lower highs, and then you start to see this gap. Not the whole gap, but the 135 area becomes a target. Not a big deal, nine points down in a consolidation. If that, But so far, the weekly... It's still very nice, but look at the stochastic at 87%. The speed with which the stochastic breaks underneath 80% tells you the speed of a pullback. So that's really important. Keep a note of that. Um, okay. So within that context, what we, so the answer is the queues are acting really well. Even today after that sharp sell-off yesterday, I love that. That's the reason why Dow's again leading. IWM is not leading funnily enough. And now what I'm looking at is within the context of the weekly chart, look at these steady candles, big green, little tiny candles, then big green candles, now tiny candles again. We, the momentum to the upside is starting to slow down, and that's why I think we're getting to a little topping formation right here. How much of a topping formation, I don't know, but all I can say is that you've got to keep in mind that these massive moves to the upside, if you don't make the... Eiffel Tower straight up and straight down. So if today was a horrible session, I would say, oops, Eiffel Tower, what's the 340 level in the QQQs? Today we're up. We're up almost three. That means that that was just normal selling pressure right there and that it could still be a retest of the 357.50. So no, we are, I don't think we've made eight. We're getting close to a short-term top in the Qs. I don't think we're there yet. And my thinking right now is that the Dow somehow or other is going to go a little higher the Qs are going to have a lot of resistance. The SMHs are going to struggle as well 
and then we have everybody coming down. This is a relationship that I always look at with gold. Gold starts to rally. Silver's looking around, ho hum, having a donut, and then looks around and says, oh my gosh, gold, and then chases gold. And then when silver finally catches up, gold says, all right, I'm done. I'm taking a rest, and silver continues, and then they both come down together. So we'll see if this is the same thing. Metaphorical exercise there. I'll be right back. Question. Oh, the big six ball. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. I said that out loud. Hope it didn't hear me. I'll be back. We have exciting news, Tigers. This June, Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle will be hosting two webinars, providing insight into his renowned market timing methodologies. On June 8th, Tim will delve into the S&P 500, teaching sentiment indicators, identifying market bottoms and divergence, and so much more. On June 15th, Tim pivots to the gold market, taking a look at cycle analysis, ratio studies, advanced decline indicators, and other important tools for analyzing this sector. Sign up today on TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFA. NN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Except for the one little blip when it went pink right there. And now it's moving up. It's at 42.85. Uh, 
I do believe this is a really good chance of being a two a two click session. Uh, it won't be for me, unfortunately. But uh, anyway, can't complain. There we go. Um, yeah. So EQT is a question. EQT is the natural gas and hydrocarbon. Now, the the, the analysis that I've been trying to do is to say. Are some of these companies that do the, say, for instance, do the deliveries or do the pumping or the piping, whatever it is, of natural gas, since the number, the amount of natural gas usage should not change regardless of the price? Well, maybe it changes slightly, but if people need it, they need it. That's all it is, if it's your energy source, right? So this seems to be, to answer my question by saying EQT, which is EQT Corporation, Natural Gas and Hydrocarbon, um, doing very nicely. Leg D, maybe making a PD today, but at 38.59, looking really good. The weekly charts improve peak A, peak B, leg C. Remember, it stays a leg until it makes a peak. Wait, don't just hear the break. The show. Don't forget, folks, today, Tim Ward does his uh, webinar. It should be a fabulous webinar. And uh, go to the front page of TFN and check it out. Thank you for being here. Check out my opening call.